it would be ideal for everybody to get it. Tonight, a closer look at who is eligible to get the COVID-19 vaccine first. Actually, it made me tear up. And a Christmas surprise for a mom recovering from a nasty fall and why it may be a curtain call for movie theaters. This is Chris 6 News at 10. Look at that. That is the site that for so many brings hope. COVID-19 vaccines rolling off the assembly line. And good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Katy Uriarte. We do begin with the cold, hard numbers when it comes to that vaccine. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, as of last year, there are 29 million people who live in the Lone Star State. Only 1.4 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine that will be coming to Texas in about 11 days. That's according to Governor Greg Abbott. However, However, estimates from the Texas Department of State Health Services found that more than 5 million people in the state fall under the category of frontline workers or the vulnerable, and they would be the first to receive the vaccine under CDC guidelines. Now, the reality is it's still going to be quite a while before most of us get that vaccine, but who are those that get the first crack at it? New at 10 tonight, our Seth Kovar has learned more about who it will be. These are the people that are on the front lines that are actually taking care of COVID-19 patients. And they're the ones the State Health Services Commissioner put at the front of the line when it comes to getting the COVID-19 vaccine. And I think that decision that he made for the Phase 1A Tier 1 is right on point. You know, if I had to pick those individuals, I would pick the same ones. EMS workers who go on emergency calls are also in the top priority group, as are people who work with vulnerable populations like nursing home caretakers. Tier 2 is an even bigger group, including outpatient doctors and some funeral home workers. So that's what local health leaders say is the state's tier system for who gets the first doses of the vaccine. But what do you think about that? So on a chilly day here in South Texas, I went somewhere you might still go, the post office, to find out. This woman says the state got it right, putting health care workers first. It would be ideal for everybody to get it, but I know that um, there has to be a process, and those are the ones that need it um, more readily available. And even though it could be a while for folks like office workers to get their vaccines, patience is a virtue. I'm willing to wait until everybody that absolutely needs to have it and is exposed to it daily. Um, they need to be safe. But her friend brought up a group of people left out for now that she says shouldn't be. My sister is a teacher for CCISD and I really disagree with that. Teachers need to definitely be included. Local health leaders say they will be along with another important group. As far as the teachers, you know, even police officers, to be honest with you, you know, they're going to be coming up pretty quickly, in my opinion. How quickly? The director of public health estimates no later than the middle of next month. Reporting in Corpus Christi, Seth Kovar, Chris 6 News. And tonight, we want to hear from you. Who do you think should be the first to get that COVID-19 vaccine? Sound off right now on our Facebook page. Developing tonight, the way you may be getting that COVID-19 vaccine, we have learned that HEB will be among the retailers distributing the vaccine via their pharmacy. The Department of Homeland Security has released a list of community pharmacies that will be distribution sites, and they do include CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart. No word, though, on when retailers could get the vaccine. And tonight we are getting a look at one of the devices that's going to help to ship that COVID-19 vaccine. These cold shipping and storage containers are made in Alabama and they run off batteries. They come with dry ice and they can monitor temperatures and locations of the box for pharmaceutical and vaccine companies. Quite vital considering that the Pfizer vaccine has to be stored at minus 70 degrees Celsius. And that is actually colder than winter in Antarctica. Uh, each of our boxes can can hold up to, we believe, depending on the packaging of how the vaccines come, uh, we'll be able to handle probably up to seven or 8,000 doses in one box. And Moderna's vaccine needs to be kept at minus 20 Celsius. The state of California, by the way, is already using these containers. And sadly, we do have three more COVID-19 related deaths to report tonight. One of the deaths is from a death that was actually certified in November, but just now counted as a COVID related death. The deceased are all women ranging in age from their 60s to their 80s. And the COVID-19 death toll now stands here in Nueces County at 496. And 139 new COVID-19 cases have also been reported today. The total case count is now up to nearly 25,000 in Nueces County. And for a look at coronavirus cases, all 
throughout the coast. So Ben, here are the numbers and you can get a look at county by county, a closer look by just visiting our website, ChrisTV.com. And new tonight from Laredo, that city has now issued a new emergency ordinance to slow down the spread of coronavirus there. Among the measures, an overnight curfew, which starts tomorrow. Residents will not be able to congregate at someone's house from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., but people are still allowed to visit businesses like restaurants during that time or even exercise. Violators face a misdemeanor charge and a fine. Well, it is time now to get a first check of our forecast, and we toss it now over to Chief Meteorologist Dale Nelson. You took uh, some vacay time at the right time, Dale. The weather was great. <laughs> I was uh, good for putting up the uh, Christmas lights, taking care of business. Yes, indeed. It was cold with frost on Monday morning, but nothing to, like that tonight, even though it's going to be cold again. We did pick up that rain on Saturday and gave us uh, over 24 inches for the year, but we're still carrying a deficit of 5.87. And the drought index that came out today shows us still in a severe drought here in Corpus Christi, north and eastward. Better out to the west, but not by much. When will we see rain again? You may be surprised. And in a few minutes, I'll let you know and be back to tell you all about it, Katya. All right, Dale, thank you. The CCISD community is in mourning tonight. Veterans Memorial Assistant Principal Rolando Gonzalez has died. He was such a kind man, really well respected, and he was liked by so many. No word on his cause of death, but our condolences do go out to his family and the school tonight. Happening now, the search is on now for a driver involved in a deadly hit and run accident near Aransas Pass, or I should say in a deadly hit and run near Aransas Pass. That accident happening Friday night on State Highway 35, about three miles north of Aransas Pass. A truck hit and killed 61-year-old Tony Kennard. A DPS spokesman says surveillance footage does show Kennard being hit by a light-colored pickup. If you have any information that can help to solve this case, call Highway Patrol at 361-698-5600. Saving locally owned restaurants. It turns out not only can you help them by patronizing them, but by what you order. We'll explain after the break. And they were wonderful people. And um, the embodiment of the Christmas spirit, too. Do you remember this mom who took an awful tumble on some Christmas decorations extension cords? Well, she got an early Christmas gift from total strangers.